There's a few things that are important to go through when you're building your character, and these are the three considerations that should be looked into. Even though weapons in Genshin Impact aren't the biggest modifiers to your character's damage, they do provide an important stat that's otherwise found only in your character, and that is the base attack stat. And you've probably noticed either when looking at your own inventory or on somebody else's account that the 5 star weapons have the highest base attack of them all. And this is done by design of how the rarity system works in the game, since this can be already seen when comparing two identical artifacts, one of which is 4 stars and the other 5 stars. You know that the latter artifact is superior, since it can go 4 levels up and provides better stats overall. Except with weapons, it gets a little tricky and while it is true that almost all the time it is recommended to use 5 star weapon over any other one you have available, there are exceptions with the most notable one being that it begs the question, who's going to be using the weapon? If the answer is going to be the main damage dealer, then in nearly every case it's best for them to utilize a 5 star weapon over any other one, since it will have higher base attack and almost every single one of these weapons have insane passive skill that boosts their viability even further. However, there are some notable exceptions like Rust at max refinement level for Tartaglia, which is going to be an insane upgrade choice, beating most of the other 5 star bows at refinement level 1. But the real concern if it's a support character, because most of the time, dealing damage is a secondary goal, and the bigger focus is usually what utility or buffs the character can provide for the team, and especially the main damage dealer. For example, Sucrose could definitely benefit from the Lost Prayer to the Sacred Wind if she was to be your main damage dealer, however, if she's going to be utilized for her capabilities of boosting the team's elemental mastery, then something like Sacrificial Fragments or Favonius Codex is much more reliable, since you can activate either skill or burst more often, resulting in more elemental reactions, not to mention the powerful battlefield strategy of grouping enemies together into one place. So keep in mind the next time you're deciding on which weapon to use, especially if you're not sure about the character's role yet. However, one thing is clear, the 5 star weapons are almost always a superior choice at refinement level 1, when compared to the same refinement level of 4 star weapon, and if your biggest concern is damage, most of the time the answer is probably going to be that 5 star weapon you were lucky enough to get, and of course, if you're a heavy spender, then having multiple refinement levels of the same 5 star weapon makes it an even more ridiculous source of power. Even if evaluating characters based on their own strengths and weaknesses is a valid strategy, it's mostly done just to assess their power level that is obviously going to be subjective from person to person, and because Genshin Impact is a game that focuses on team-oriented gameplay, it's never a good justification to go off building your character without the assumption that the other three teammates will be fighting alongside. And one thing that a lot of us pursue when building our characters is trying to attain those perfect stats, like the 2 to 1 ratio of critical damage and critical rating, stacking as much of attack percentage as possible and getting a nice damage bonus goblet. But because this is a gotcha game, seeking these goals can take weeks or even months before we are satisfied with our results and this could prevent you from exploring more characters or get a better team performance. This is why one of the things that can help your character become stronger would be to identify who will be their teammates and can they substitute their shortcomings or instead make them even better at what they're already good at. One great example is Bennett and the unique attack boost he provides for the team. If you can set this burst off consistently one after or another, then some of the other teammates who are lacking in good damage support capabilities can instead switch out one of the artifacts that provides attack percentage to something else, like elemental mastery or even energy recharge, since you're essentially giving them more chances to increase their attack when you're standing inside Bennett's burst, which results in more team bursts that usually not just provide damage but other effects too. Or for example, if you're somewhere in the middle of the game and still climbing those adventure ranks and feeling like you're not dealing enough damage, maybe you have thrilling tales of the dragon slayers that sitting in your inventory on you Used, which could be instead utilized to boost anyone's attack by a considerable amount. Point is, building a character in Genshin Impact is a lot like your typical shonen anime, where friends, or in this case your teammates, are there to make your favorite character stronger, and trying to attain those perfect artifacts can be a setback if you're not focusing on the whole team that can provide amazing utility or support instead. Also, if you want to get more team building advice, make sure to follow us on Twitter, link in the description. Having a goal for your character and sticking to it is usually something that brings you one step closer to achieving their full potential, and one of the hardest things to do in the game once you're stuck in the maintenance mode and just waiting for new content to arrive, is deciding what sort of long-term plan you have for the character. And the biggest impact you can have that's going to take a lot of time to work towards too are going to be the character's talents. Even after playing the game since launch, someone like Razor who has been exclusively selected to receive all the Dwalin's claws is still nowhere close to his full potential with 
only his normal attack at max level, and the other two talents are still lingering at level 6 and 7 without the constellation upgrades. And from early on, it was clear that his biggest strength is going to be his normal attacks, which literally go hand to hand with his burst. So after months of fighting the weekly world bosses and collecting the materials, the end result is him only maxing out one of his talents. Hopefully, this should give you enough perspective to understand how long it takes to perfect one of the talents and how important it is to decide what is going to be most beneficial for your character. Then there's also the consideration of how you plan to use those weekly boss materials. For example, do you want to fully max out one character or instead focus on maybe maxing out just one talent and then moving on to the next character, which can be a very reasonable decision, especially if you're only using this character as your support or usually more concerned with one or two talents instead. But to summarize, there's a lot to consider when it comes to weapons and one of the biggest sources of power they provide is their base attack that also happens to be more superior on 5 star weapons. So if your concern is getting most out of your main damage dealer, it will almost always be the winning case to use the 5 star weapon for its larger base attack. However, for characters who are there to support, they are going to want to focus on a weapon with substats like energy recharge or health and passive skills also hold more influence than the base attack of the weapon. Now this also means chasing after numbers is not always the best approach and re-evaluating your whole team composition can help you make your character stronger by not just relying on weapons and artifacts. Finally, if you want your character to excel at what they're good at one step at a time, it's best to focus onto one talent and fully level it before moving on to the next one or even switching to the next character. Let us know in the comments which character you're currently building and what you like about them. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel by enabling the bell notification on and make sure to gently press the like button. And if you want more news and guides, follow us on Twitter, link in the description. Thank you for watching us.